is Matt here from Hive Roaster. Uh, I seem a little distracted. That's because I've never roast. I've never done a uh, YouTube live stream before. Uh, so we're going to learn this one together. Uh, and I'm sure it's going to come out really good. So first thing we're going to need to do is get some coffee. Uh, we've got our hive right here. Yeah, adjust this though. Let's see what we can do. Back, it up. Back this up. Bingo. All right. Move our stuff around a little bit so it looks nice. Okay, it looks good. So there's a scale. I'm not sure what I did with my normal uh, my normal pan that I use for this. So this is Chivas uh, coffee. You can see how it looks in the jar. Um, I'm not sure how much of this I have left. I'm going to look and. Depending on how much I have left, it'll tell me how much I want to roast right now. Okay, so I've got just about 300 grams, so I'm going to do just do a half of this. 28. Got again. There's 150 grams, so that's looking good. And again, I have no idea how this is going to turn out because I've never done a live stream on YouTube. Uh, I'm doing a horizontal video today, which is uh, also a little new for me. Most of the time I've got my camera sitting there, and right now I'm staring at some other sort of a thing. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to post on Instagram and I'm live. We'll see how that goes. There we go, there's some serious advertising. Okay, so, first we wanna do is we wanna jump out the old stuff in the hive because I didn't clean it out last time, so there's a couple of beans left over in here. This is what we're using to roast. Um, we're using what we call the digital dome, which is this guy, can you see that right there? It's got the temperature on it. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see the temperature while I'm roasting. But you can certainly see my shiny head. Let's adjust this down a little bit more. That's a roaster. You're not going to be able to see the, see the, uh, that's a little better, huh? I like that. Okay. And there's, uh, um, you guys may not be able to hear this at all. And I don't really know. And we're not going to know until we're done roasting. I need to roast some coffee anyways, because I'm running short on coffee at my house. So. We're going to roast, and we're going to uh, live stream. And so one of the things I'm doing is I'm using my phone to be able to tell how long I've been at this for. Um, I'll turn this light off and see if it makes my head shine less. How's that look? More pleasant? Yeah, I like it. Okay. So there we got a little fire. We're going to go on medium heat. We're turning it on the phone and let's begin. So hopefully you guys can hear me talking over the sound of the roaster. And I don't really know how that's going to go down. I'm not going to know until we're all done roasting here. And now that I'm in the middle of it, I'm committed. It's so but because this coffee is from Chip House, I roasted this before and I know that it it really does well as a nice long development period. Um, it's going to be a fairly soft bean. 
it's going to give me a lot of flavors of chocolate and cocoa, nuts, spices, stuff like that. You know, nice, dark, warm, like what I would consider like a morning coffee taste. And so that's what I'm going to try to exploit with this roast. I'm going to roast this as slowly as I can. I'm going to have a really extended duration of, uh, of uh, development. And we'll see what we come up with. So far, everything that I've had from this bag, this chip box, has been absolutely phenomenal. And something I wanted to talk about today while I've got you guys here is uh, diner coffee. So, you know, specialty coffee is a lot of times, you know, uh, not French roast. It's not Italian. It's not any of those. It's really light. Um, and it's great because you can really get a lot of flavor out of it. You can, you can really taste the beans. However, people, myself included, have been drinking what we call diner coffee for years. So, you know, and the thing about diner coffee is that it goes really good with breakfast food. So, you know, like if you eat a nice greasy breakfast, there's absolutely nothing better than, you know, some nice dark, you know, pretty carbony coffee, really. Uh, what I'm not going to want to wash down, you know, bacon and eggs with is an Ethiopian white roast. It's just not the thing for me. It's not that. It's not the coffee for that time of day or for that function. So what I'm going to usually want is something dark. Well, the problem with roasting dark is that it hides the flavor of the coffee. It really masks it. And you wind up with, you know, a lot of times a pretty boring flavor. It just tastes like carbon. So I've been trying to perfect this for quite some time, and I think I've gotten it down to where it's basically perfect. And so what I've done is I've made a 50-50 blend of a fully developed but low-end temperature Ethiopian, okay? And so what I mean by that is that the coffee was probably 12 or 13 minutes total roast time. And uh, so I had an end temperature of about 410 degrees with about 25 to 30% of that roast time being developed. So what that does is it... It smooths up the coffee, it mutes some of the acid, but it still allows that brightness to come through and some of the flavor of the Ethiopian coffee because you keep it so light. Then I mix that 50-50 with a really hard Colombian that I roasted to 430 degrees. And I did that 430 degree roast, again with a long development, but I really rushed up to the pot, so my overall roast time was only about 11 minutes on it. And the reason I did that is I was trying to keep that coffee bright. I was trying to retain as much of the flavor as I could from it because I knew, knew that I was going to kind of crush that flavor with the carbon that I was going to build up by going to 430 degrees. Anyway, bottom line, the, uh, the, the blend was just phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's like, it's probably the best coffee I've had in a really, really long time. Uh, you know, that isn't like a single origin because to me, you know, you get like, I was going through some more videos and, and I listening to myself talk about some of these coffees and, and one of them in particular was this Ambien coffee. And it was, it was outrageous. It was so good. It's a single origin. It's light roasted, you know, and there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, light roasted coffee, uh, single origin coffee is absolutely bomb. I just did 300 degrees at four minutes on this coffee. Uh, that's pretty fast. But I'm not too worried about burning this coffee because it's pretty pretty dense bean. It's not like anything like a, you know, it's not a high altitude bean, but it's pretty dense. So my next milestone is going to be probably about 380 degrees. I'm going to turn the heat down dramatically on this and really try to extend out that, that development period just as much as I possibly can. You guys can't, I guess you can't see the, I'm going to have to get this thing set up so that we can see it while we're roasting. There it is right there. So you can see how fast that temperature is moving, except it's backwards. I'm going to have to figure out how to reverse my camera when I do these so that the uh, so that everything comes out right. Because right now it's backwards. I don't have anything written on my shirt, but if I did it, it would be backwards. So at 335 degrees, chugging right along. I really like the way this coffee smells. I am a real fan. I know that, you know, this is my first live stream here, so I can't say you guys have heard this before, but I love coffee from Mexico. I think it's some of the best coffee around. 
and it really doesn't get that much attention in the eating industry in general. I'm not sure why, but man, it's good. So far, so far, my, my roaster, my live stream statistics here are great. I've been, I've been at it for 10 and a half minutes and I've got zero watchers. I've got zero thumbs up. I've got zero comments. I'm going to have to figure out how to promote this uh, to get viewers on it because I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. If you guys know, by all means, let me know. Okay, I'm at 373 degrees. 74, 75. Let's slow the steamship down. There we go. So I just dropped the heat a lot. And my goal here is that I'm going to try to stall this roast at right about 390 degrees and then pick back up with a little positive rate of rise to try to keep it under 5 degrees a minute. There's a lot of fear when people talk about rate of rise, you know, between the flick, the crash, the bait, um, and the stall, everybody's worried about it, and I don't worry about it, you know? I mean, I try to not do anything dumb, but I'm intentionally going to stall this roast because I want to stop my rate of rise right at the top. Because that allows me to time it, that allows me to see exactly where I'm at because I don't I'm trying to keep my end temperature low on this, but I want a lot of development. So there are 390 degrees in seven minutes. So she's fast today. And already I've got a nice rate of rise. So right now I'm, I'm trying to decide, am I going to have to turn the heat back up? And I may. I do. Anyhow, one of the really cool things about high roasters is it allows you to really push the boundaries of what's possible in roasting coffee. Um, you know, a commercial roaster has kind of a, a minimum amount of airflow, drum speed, and gas percentage in order for it to function properly. Um, and with the high roaster, you really don't need that. You can pretty much just do however you want to. And as long as you don't, you know, have your roaster way up here in the air, and you're not putting just a ton of dry heat into it, you can get away with some pretty slow developments uh, and slow rates of rise and not have to worry about baking your coffee at all, which is where I'm at right now. So I'm at 396 degrees. I've gained six degrees in one minute. Can't beat it. I don't know if you guys can hear it popping or not. It's pretty quiet in there, but you can hear it. Honestly, I have no idea what the sound is going to be like on this video because I haven't done these before. I've got two things going. I've got a microphone here and I've got a, a, a camera up there. And I don't know how it's going to react. It may just only pick up the noise of the roaster. We'll see. So I'm at 400 degrees in nine minutes. And really what I'm going here is I'm going for overall development time, not really overall roast time. So what I'm looking for is like three minutes minimum of development on this roast, which seeing as how I what I pop or I if I start popping at seven minutes overall, that would be over 30% of my roast if I stop at 10 minutes, and I'm gonna go way over that. So What I'm saying is that my my uh, my total development period is going to be way more than 20% of the growth. And that's what I want because I'm trying to develop these flavors and I want this, the, the, outer, sorry, the America's coffee can just be so chocolatey and smooth and tight. I just love it. And uh, that's what we're going to have here. So I'm at 405 in 10 minutes. So I've gained five minutes, five degrees in the last minute. And five degrees rate of rise, that's pretty awesome. Now, I may need to maintain this rate of rise. I might need to lower my heat down just slightly. Or 
start playing them off the burner. And what I mean by that is, like, you'll see that I'm going around in kind of a circle, and my roaster is not centered over top of the flame. And the reason for that is I'm trying to jump heat. I don't want all the heat from the burner going right into my roaster. I'm trying to get it top to go through the metal because it slows the process down a little bit. And it's, in a way, it's easier to deal with than trying to actually turn the gas down because with just a small adjustment, you can greatly affect the amount of beef you use going into your roaster. But if you just kind of play around with roaster positioning, you can, you know, put a little bit less heat in the roaster without it being such a big uh, dramatic change. So I'm at 11 minutes, I'm at 408. 409. And if you guys are new to the high roaster, the deal about the high roaster is it allows you to be able to create uh, the same type of coffee you get in a regular, you know, high end specialty coffee shop at home. Um, and it's really the only roaster that does that because it allows you to have this complete control. Like, there's no roaster that's going to allow you to drop down to a five degree rate of rise at the end of a roast the way that I am. So I'm at 414, 415, I'm right at 12 minutes. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go for it right then and there because I think that's going to be good. So I'm jumping into this bowl, just as kind of a transfer mechanism. Normally when I do these, I, I turn completely around. So we're just going to do this. And now you guys can see where I cool. All right, here I am. So I've got my roast complete and it's cooled off. Let's see what we can do for some close-ups of this. Let him focus. Can you guys see that? How does this look? Good, looks good. Mm -hmm. Digging it. All right, there, well, I chopped my head completely off. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and shut this baby down, and we're going to see how this whole live stream looks. Um, because it's my first one, if you guys have any uh, comments, I'd really like to hear them. Like, that format was horrible. We don't want to look at your big bald head. You know, show us more close to the coffee. Whatever it is, let me know because I'm here to help you guys. And my whole goal is for you guys to be able to roast the best coffee possible 
you know, using the hive or however you do it. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Bald head. It's terrible. <laughs>